the minimum viable $100 startup. Is it possible to build a real business from home for less than a hundred bucks? And when I mean a real business, I'm talking about one that generates the cash flow you need to pay for your life, to pay for mortgages, and with the dependability that you need so you can count on that business continuing to perform year after year for decades on end. Now, spoiler alert, the answer is yes, it is possible. This is how my wife and I began. It was an investment of $95.40 mixed with thousands of hours of effort that started everything for us. You're about to get the minimum viable version of this. And what do I mean by minimum viable? I want you to be able to test this idea with very little money, obviously, and hopefully as little time as possible. I want to help you be as efficient as you can so you can test this idea out for yourself to see if it is for you. And it's really quite simple. Billions of people are hyper addicted to the internet, their smartphones, their laptops, all of it. Humanity is glued to their devices. And I do believe the lockdowns increased this. Like going out in our world and going into a national park or 15 of them, like I've been on this past summer. Just everywhere. I've been in a bunch of different cities, seeing friends and family, driving around. So lots of contact with people at gas stations all across America. 25,000 miles. It's been awesome. And people just seem even more absorbed by their devices today than before. Because I got me a property up on the hill, big old garden. And when things locked down, I just kind of hung out of my house and didn't really notice. My life wasn't impacted during. So I have this like before and after snapshots and boom, people are just so engulfed in their devices. Which means that if you want to build a business, you need to be showing up on that screen of theirs. Marketing, advertising, education, social media, content marketing. And this is like the big shift. If you ain't run a business before, if you're just starting out, you're a consumer. You've been spending money on things offered by people who took the time to start businesses and market their products, etc. So we got to shift you over to the creator side from the consumer side. Professionals at this create more than they consume. It's also kind of a mathematically proven way to achieve financial freedom. Create more cash flow than your lifestyle consumes. And these businesses can do exactly that. And it's simple. It's not necessarily easy. So getting into the weeds, technically speaking, you are going to be a creator and you're going to publish useful content for these billions of people who are just glued to their devices, asking question after question or looking for that next little thing they can do to improve their lives in a million variety of ways. Some people want to lose weight. Some people want to gain weight. Everybody looking for what they think is going to make them happy. So in the 
$100 startup fashion, your two platform choices that I'm going to give you would be YouTube or a self-hosted WordPress blog. Because with those two, you can publish content that will get picked up by a search engine, which means you can get your content in front of people who are actually looking for answers, products, solutions in the niche or the realm or the world that you kind of commit yourself to. We're not trying to go create desire in an audience. We're just trying to go get in front of the broader desires that are already there within a market or a group of people. I've done both professionally. We've grown a blog that's achieved, I mean, 40, 50 million visits. And I've built YouTube channels. One has had about 11 million visits. Uh, the other one, I think, is upwards of 40 or 50 million visits, about 500,000 subscribers between the two channels. So I've done both. And the magic of this is that you can literally get like a little tripod, arrange yourself so you're facing a window, so you got some natural light on you, and you can click record on that camera on your phone that you already own and start talking, and you can upload it. That's what I did starting in 2016. Video number one came out. It's easy to convince yourself that you need to go buy professional lighting and a digital SLR camera. It's really easy to go buy all of the things. It's really difficult to show up day in and day out and create and publish. That's the ultimate challenge of this business plan. We'll talk about that more. But the core concept here is that billions of people are using YouTube like a search engine. How to record my first podcast. How to create a podcast RSS feed. What is the best podcast hosting software? What's the best microphone for podcasting? Okay, these are the types of queries that people would search. And you're probably thinking, well, Miles, I mean, I would search that on Google. Yeah, I, I probably would too, up to a point. But when I want to watch somebody plug that shit all in together and see exactly how it's set up, I go to YouTube. And a lot of people do. If you're teaching somebody how to knit, please make a video, right? Like I don't want to go like through image and text and image and text and scroll and image and text to try to like follow along if you're trying to teach me how to knit. So some things lend themselves to video and others can potentially lend themselves to blogs. But you can get the basics of a little tripod with a little cell phone clip the cell phone holder clip on the top, and voila, you're in the game. And when you publish on YouTube, you need to know that YouTube owns you. You are on rented land. So you'll want to make sure you build out some stability in the ownership of your content, which we'll talk about in a minute here. Okay, you, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you could ever get deplatformed for any reason. But in the beginning, we have to start somewhere. And we really need to start where people are searching for answers because then we can go create those answers they're searching for. And when we do that enough over and over and over, we can show up, get displayed, get the attention, get their attention, and essentially build a business off of that traffic. Okay. Same game with a self-hosted WordPress blog. People are searching Google. And when you rank for the answers, you get the traffic. And in, on both of those platforms, if you're getting traffic, you can get paid. 
because they both have wonderful, simple advertising solutions in place. YouTube's got some requirements. You got to be able to get to the level of monetization. I think it's like a thousand subscribers and some specifics and how many minutes viewed. If you commit and you stick with it, you'll get there. It's just a question of when. But then you can start running ads pretty effectively with a few clicks and all of a sudden you are generating cash flow from the content that you're publishing. On a blog, Google's got their AdSense program. It's super simple. I don't even think they have a minimum requirement. So I just make sure you're getting 5, 10, 15 visits a day to your blog before you start adding that stuff on. Because again, the real challenge is growing traffic. That's the first real challenge. Now, the big risk, the two ways to do that, obviously, are YouTube and blogging. Lots of content. Hundreds of posts or videos targeting specific keyword phrases that you have data that says people actually search for that. And then you execute that over. Here's the part that's going to burn. Hundreds of times. And you just really go all in on creating a library of useful content pieces, answers, solutions, tutorials, guides, reviews, etc. That, when you execute relentlessly and you do it hundreds of times per year, for perspective, two blog posts a week for one year equals 104 blog posts. Three videos per week is going to get you just over 150 videos in year one. Now, as you're building up this library of content, there is this risk that the platform owns you. On YouTube, it's very clear, right? They could just turn off your account, which they've done. Let's hope they don't, but I mean, it's just being honest. On Google, they do all their algorithm changes, and sometimes there's collateral damage, and good sites that were built appropriately just get banhammer slapped out of the number one spot. It just It's just like a risk of the game. If there was no risk here, this would be a job where, you know, you work for someone else who's taking on the risk but there's risk here. So, so the risk of the platforms owning you in this business model means that we need a solution for that, which is first, once your traffic is consistent, you start working on building an email list because no one can stop you from emailing your email list, right? That is something you truly do own. If your current provider is like, Oh, you're done mailing with us. You download your uh, backup file of your email subscribers. You take it over to a new software program, you upload it and you begin emailing your people immediately. And there's an infinite number of these mailers. And you can even go to self hosted mailers if you ever wanted to get really geeky about owning that core communication method with your people. So that to me is like one of the real goals within this minimum viable $100 startup. And when you get into the email marketing part, it's like, Oh, well, aren't there more costs associated with this? And eventually, when your list is over a thousand people, you have to start paying. But if you've got a traffic system built and you've driven your first thousand leads, you started at zero and you, then you got lead number one and number two and number 974 and 975, you're making money off the whole system. So you, you should be able to handle that, what, $19 a month or $29 a month fee that happens after that point. The only costs we're talking about here for this whole business model is maybe less than $100 worth of hardware so you can get your phone stable to where you can record yourself for a YouTube video. That's how all my YouTube videos started was my cell phone. You can even get a little tiny LED light thing that clips onto your phone for like nine bucks. Don't need it, but you can get it. On the self-hosted blog side, 
you've got $95.40 or probably less today because the cost of technology keeps going down. So it's less than 100 bucks to get your domain name and your WordPress going. And from there, there's free keyword research tools. You can use Google to give you as much keyword research as you actually need to get going. I teach how to do these things on YouTube. Just type in Miles Beckler, comma, SEO or Miles Beckler, comma, keyword research on YouTube. You'll find my step-by-step -step tutorials that show you exactly how to do it. If you need free tools, type in free tools, free keyword research tool, comma, Miles Beckler in YouTube. You'll find my recommendations because that's my library of content that I did. It's 684 videos or something like that that I'm still adding to because I'm a creator. Now, in addition to growing your email list, you also want to build out multiple streams of income. And this safeguards you from any one vendor turning you off. If you're all in on ads and the ad company decides you're not ad worthy anymore, there's very little you can do other than switching to another ad company, which is kind of annoying. And during that interim phase, when one turns you off and you figure out how to get the next one, you get that thing set up and running, there's, I don't know, days, weeks, for some people, months in between those, and you're just getting no cash flow. If you are 100% focused on earning income from ad revenue. And this is where you start to be able to do affiliate marketing, which is where you get to recommend and promote products. And when someone clicks through your link, they get a commission. You get a commission, they get a product. You can create and sell your own products. It's better margins. There's more profit in that game. But that's all down a path, right? The real challenge in the beginning is getting the algorithm to fall in love with you. So what do you do? You have to become a master of the craft. And that's the name of one of the podcast episodes and YouTube videos I've released. And it's important. Because if you're going to look for the cheapest way possible to build a business online, it's important to remember that you're going up against people who are bringing money to the table and you're, you're going to have to like get some sort of a competitive advantage. And if you've got more time than money, that means you can be more meticulous. A lawyer who gets to bill $430 per hour and makes $375,000 a year who hates their life and they want to build an affiliate site on the side they're looking for the solution where they can throw money at it. And they're like, ah, oh, who can write all this for me for $1,500 a month? Perfect. I'll just pour $1,500 a month into this asset, which is a website. It'll grow and hashtag passive income. So that's one potential competitor that you have. But if you really geek out on two things, keyword research and search engine optimization, the basics of SEO, you'll be able to run circles around their content. And ultimately what matters in the end is your rankings that are giving you traffic. It's not how much content you publish if the content doesn't rank. It's how many different posts that you can publish that each get a bit of traffic. It's how many videos can you publish that each get a bit of traffic. Because then you get that whole compounding effect of all that traffic. And the real two mechanisms that bridge the gap between your YouTube videos and your channel or your blog and Google, okay, you bridge that gap with their algorithm. Their algorithm is what decides which post or which video deserves to be number one for that specific keyword phrase. Now, this is relatively simple stuff. And I explain it again in my YouTube videos, just search Miles Beckler, how to optimize for SEO, Miles Beckler, how to optimize a YouTube video. I have videos that teach how I was optimizing my YouTube videos. 
So that's the first half of the solution to get the algo to love you is to optimize your content for the algorithm, which requires keyword research and SEO. And then it's scaling your content with each one being focused on a keyword and optimized for search. Now I'm kind of crazy when I go all in on something, I'm like all in and I'm ready to not suck at it anymore. And I honor the fact that when I start at everything, I suck at it. So I've habituated doing these 90 day challenges. So when I started my YouTube channel, I didn't just make a video and then sit on it for a week. I made a video the next day and a video the next day, every day for 90 days consecutively. Travel days, flew across the ocean a couple times, went to Asia for a conference during that period. And I was like making videos from the business class lounge. Cause like I had a video to publish cause I was committed to hitting a deadline of one video a day, every day for 90 days. If you're blogging, you might just be like, Miles, I can't do that. Fine. What can you do for 90 days? Can you do four per week for 90 days? One, once every Monday through Friday, right? The, the business days and then you take weekends off. I don't know. Do what you need to do. But the better you get, let me rephrase that. The more keywords you research and blog posts you create and publish and optimize, the better you're going to get at keyword research and optimizing your posts. So your skills improve more quickly if you go through this iteration process quickly. Plus your library of useful content grows faster. It usually takes people a few hundred pieces of content to get themselves into real momentum with traffic. And if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'll never do that. Well, what are you going to do for the next four or five years? Watch gurus flexing how much money they're making, trying to sell you their scam, or are you actually going to set up, step up and create the content and just do the work? Cause that's what it takes. Cause once you have traffic, everything works in the business. Cash flow works and you turn on ads. It's easy. Review some products. Great. Find some really great digital products that your people want and start connecting and then boom, you're going to start seeing real money come in. But the only reason that works is because you got people showing up. Then you grow an email list and whew, that opens a whole window, a whole door, a garage door, like one of those RV size garage doors we got, you know, for the van, like 11 foot, like a big door opens for you. Cause once you have a list, you find somebody who's got a great software and you just email your whole list and bada bing, bada boom, 4% of people sign up. It's fun when the math works, you're doing the same amount of work and your cash flow just quadruples your ability to test and improve your opt-in offers goes up when you have traffic right you got a pop-up on your blog well, if you're getting 500 visits a day you can do a pretty statistically significant split test every couple of days you're going to learn really quickly what the best opt-in is and the best headline for that opt-in is if you just iterate quickly and if you've got the traffic and of course you can work on testing and improving the offers, find the things that not just that you love that you're ready to share and promote, but that your people also love and they click and they buy, because you'll know which one of the offers you send have the best conversions. And obviously you'll find more keyword phrases and more content angles to create, to help your people realize that that thing that you love as an affiliate is the thing that's going to help them get the result that they want. And you just ape into it. Well, it's simple. You create content that helps people. You focus the content on the phrases and the questions that they're actually searching and you actually create content that helps them. When you start at it, you're going to suck at it. Once you do, 78 of them, you'll be much better. When you get to 124 pieces of content, you'll be even better yet. Along that path somewhere, it gets fun. It's generally when the cash flow starts coming in. It gets a lot more fun when the cash flow starts coming in. I've seen so many people with this business model say things like, ah, I'm gonna make a couple of hundred bucks a month on the side, or oh, I just wanna make three grand or four grand a month. 
And now they're making like 18 grand a month. It's wonderful because behind all of this is the scale of things. Billions of people every day are glued to their devices, asking questions to their search engines, looking for things to buy, looking for things that are going to help them achieve more happiness in their life. Whether it's get better at a hobby, catch more fish, whether it's to learn a new skill, whether it's to find a new side gig, whatever it is, there are everybody just looking down their little geeky rabbit holes, looking up their new conspiracy theories. Well, if you get all the conspiracy theory traffic in the world and you're running ads on that, you're doing damn well. If you really like conspiracy theories, if you've got a wide variety of tinfoil hats, that could be a very fun business model, especially when it starts kicking out automated cash flow for work that you did last year for posts that you wrote two years ago. I'm gonna make money today from a visitor who ain't heard of me before today. And they're going to find one of my pieces of content today. Might be from a Google search. It might be from a YouTube search. Thousands of people are going to interact with my brands today. And of those thousands of people, one or two of them are going to buy my stuff. A few dozen of them, a couple hundred of them are going to join my email lists today. I want you to get there. It's possible for you. It doesn't require a large financial investment. The true investment is that commitment and perseverance to creating an optimized library of useful content. You get there, you've got traffic. You got traffic. Everything else in this business works. And that's it. That's the minimum viable $100 startup.